It's getting ready. I give you a quick summary. Number one, that this crucifixion is a fiction. That it oh. didn't happen. Crucifixion the way the Christians is a claim, fiction. Those things didn't happen. Number one, he was reluctant to die. He didn't want to die. He didn't come prepared to come for any type of sacrifice. Luke chapter 22 verse 36, you'll find he's preparing for a fight. And he had he come to die, there was no need for him to tell his disciples to go and arm themselves. Number two, he beseeched God for help. Matthew chapter 26 verse 39. Number three, God heard his prayers. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7. Number four, an angel of God came to strengthen him. Luke chapter 22 verse 43. Pilate finds Jesus not guilty. It's good reason to keep Jesus alive. John chapter 18 verse 38. Number six, Pilate's wife shown a dream in which she was told that no harm should come to this just man. <laughs> in the other words, that he should be saved alive. Matthew chapter 27 verse 19. Number seven, supposed to be on the cross for only three hours. According to the system in vogue, no man could die by crucifixion in so short a time, which means that even if he was fastened to the cross, he was alive. Hmm. Number eight, okay. the other two, his crossmates on the, res on the respective crosses were alive. So Jesus too, for the same period of time, must be alive. John chapter 19 verse 32. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, saw what? That he was dead already. I says, you know, on page, page 36 and 30, 37 and 38, I give you a list of 11 different persons in the newspapers who were certified dead and they were not dead. By doctors with stethoscopes, they were pronounced dead and they were not dead, they came back to life. And there is a society in England, I've given you the picture of the society of people who have come back from the dead. Were they all resurrected? No. But they were certified dead. This man, seeing a person on the cross, he thought he was dead and he saw that he's dead already. I said, what does it mean? And saw. When doctors make mistakes in the Hrutskier hospital, where Chris Barnard operates, a white woman was put certified dead and put into the mortuary, next morning she came out alive. <laughs> when you make mistakes, that's like scary. It, certifying people dead when they're not dead. Certifying people dead, yeah. That he was dead already. So I said, Jesus was, it happens, John 1933, so. that there was a mistake there in seeing. Number nine, Encyclopedia Biblica, under article cross, column 960 says that when the spear was thrust, Jesus was alive. We didn't write the Encyclopedia Biblica. Number 10, and when they launched him on the side with the spear, so forth with they came out blood and water, which is a sign of life. Number 11, his legs not broken as a fulfillment of prophecy. I said, legs can be of any use only if Jesus was alive. And this is the fulfillment of prophecy, says the Christian. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Psalms chapter 24, verse 20. Number 12. There was a thunderstorm, earthquake, and darkening of the sun, all within three hours, to disperse, to disperse the sadistic mob, to enable his secret disciples to help keep him alive. Number 13, the Jews doubted his death. They suspected that he had escaped death on the cross, that he was alive. And now the next day, the next day, they go to Pilate, the chief priests and Pharisees come together into Pilate saying, Sir, we remember so and so, and we don't want to make another mistake like we had made in the first, that the last error shall be worse than the first error. What was the first error they made? You know what? They allowed the body to come down without breaking his legs. Now they want to make doubly sure, but they missed the bus. The Jews missed the bus. You know, yesterday, last night, there was in the August that they didn't miss the bus in Palestine. You know, within in 24 seconds, 25 seconds, they killed three uh, Arabs and, you know, who were out to do some terrorist business, they killed three. They didn't miss the bus there. But here in the Bible, Matthew chapter 27, verses 62 to 64, they missed the bus because the next day they go along to make the sepulchre secure. Next day, after the horse has bolted, you go and lock the gate. There's something wrong with you. The Bible says, next day, Pilate, number 14, Pilate marvels to hear that Jesus was dead. He said, Pilate marveled if he were already dead. And calling to him the centurion, he asked him whether he had been any while dead. Mark chapter 15, verse 44. You only marvel if you know the thing that they're talking didn't happen. 
If you take a man to a firing squad and you put six bullets through him and if he dies, there's nothing to marvel. But if he didn't die, you marvel. Hmm. Now Pilate marvels that, look, no man can die within three hours. In other words, according to his experience, the man is alive. Number 15, big and roomy chamber, big roomy chamber, close at hand and big and airy for willing hands to come to the rescue. Providence was out to keep Jesus alive. Number 16, stone and winding sheets had to be removed. Only necessary if Jesus was alive. John chapter 20 verse 1. John chapter 20 verse 1, okay. Hmm. Number 17. Report on the winding sheets. German scientists who carried out experiments on the shroud of Turin said that the heart of Jesus had not stopped functioning, that he was alive. Number 18. Hmm. He was ever in disguise. Disguise not necessary if Jesus was resurrected. Only necessary if he was alive. John chapter 21 verse 4. Number 19, he forbade Mary Magdalene to touch him. Touch me not, for this reason that it would hurt, because he was alive. John chapter 20 verse 17. Number 20, not yet ascended unto my father. In the language of the Jew, in the idiom of the Jew, he was saying, I am not dead yet. In other words, I am alive. John mm. chapter 20 verse 17. Number 21, Mary Magdalene not afraid on recognizing Jesus. Because she had seen signs of life before. She was looking for a Jesus who was alive. John chapter 20 verse 16. Number 22. His disciples petrified on seeing Jesus in the upper room. All their knowledge about the crucifixion was from hearsay. Therefore they could not believe that Jesus was alive. To had almal, homfarlat and khaflach. They were not there. Number 23. At food again and again in his post-crucifixion appearances. Food only necessary if he was alive. Luke chapter 24 verse 43. Number 24. Never showed himself to his enemies because he had escaped death by the skin of his teeth. He was alive. Number 25. Took only short trips because he was not resurrected, not spiritualized, but alive. He went to Emmaus. He went to the upper room, back again after eight days. He only took short trips because he was not resurrected. Otherwise, he would have gone up to heaven. No sense in going and coming back up and down, up and down, not from heaven to down and up above. He's going around in and around Jerusalem all the time. Number 26, testimony of men around the tomb. They say, why seek ye the living among the dead? Why are you looking for a live person among dead people in the cemetery? Luke chapter 24, verse 4 and 5. That he is not dead, but alive. Hmm. Why seek ye the living among the dead? Number 27. Testimony 27. of the angels. The angels say. The angels who had said that he was alive. That he lever. That he lever. That he is alive. What's wrong with people? What are you reading? The angels, what did they say? That he is resurrected. No. He said that he lever. He is alive. They said, no, he is not alive. He is dead. He did not say resurrected, but the actual word uttered by the angels was alive. Luke chapter 24 verse 23. 28. Mary Magdalene testifies. They heard that he was alive and had been seen by her. They believed not. Mark 16, 11. Mary did not watch for a spook or a ghost or spirit of Jesus, but a live Jesus. What they could not believe was that the master was alive. Mark 16, 11. Number 29. Dr. Primrose, a senior anesthetist of the Royal Glasgow Infirmary, he says that the water in the blood was an account of scourging by staves and upset of the nervous vessels, that which was a sure sign that Jesus was alive. Okay, now and number now, 13. The last and final one. Here we tonight, go. Jesus had himself foretold that he was going to remain alive. Ma, Matthew chapter 12, verse 38, 39, 40. He himself had told that he was not to die. That is his prophecy. Good evening, Dr. Zakir Naik. Um, this is Mary. Uh, I'm a Christian and a banker by profession. Uh, my question uh, for you is based on your statement that uh, nowhere in the Bible it's mentioned that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And uh, based on my knowledge and understanding of Bible, I have picked up two verses to quote, and uh, I would like to only your clarification in the light of Islam. The first one is Matthew chapter 3, verse number 17. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son, 
in whom I am well pleased. The second is John chapter 3, verse number 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so whosoever shall believe, believe in, in him shall not die but have everlasting life. That's right. <laughs> Sister, just to correct your statement, you made a question saying that I said that nowhere in the Bible it says that Jesus is the Son of God. I never said that nowhere in the Bible is it mentioned that Jesus is the Son of God. I said there is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible. There is not a single unambiguous statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or ways is worship me. I never said the Bible does not say Jesus is Son of God. What I said, there is not a single unambiguous statement, not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or ways is worship me. If you point out any such two statements, I am ready to accept Christianity. If your question assumes that Son of God means Jesus is God, very well, I'll reply to your question. Many Christians think that just by the statement Son of God means Jesus is God. Sister, do you know in the Bible, Adam is Son of God, Ephraim is Son of God, Israel is Son of God. God has got sons by the tons in the Bible. That means you haven't read your Bible, sister. So do you mean to say all of them are gods? Is Adam God? Is Ephraim God? Is Israel God? No. I think your point is son only God, begotten sister, son, not just you, son. If you read Romans chapter number 8, verse number 14, all those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. Means if you follow the commandment of God, if I follow the commandment of God, I am a son of God. In this way, undoubtedly, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, verily, is the most beloved son of God. Meaning, he is following the commandment of God. I have got no problem at all. If you say son of God means person who follows the commandments of God, like it's mentioned in Romans, all those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. If I follow the commandment of God, you follow the commandment of God, we are all children of God. Very innocent statement, no problem. So as far as your Matthew is concerned, 317 I've clarified. Now coming to your second quotation of Gospel of John chapter 3 verse number 16. Mm -hmm. But what the Christian missionaries say, no, 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 brother Zakir, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is not a normal son. He is the begotten son of God. And they quote. Yeah. Gospel of John, chapter number 3, verse number 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believeth in him shall not die, but have everlasting life. Sister, simple question. What is the meaning of the word begotten? He has given it. No, what is the meaning of begotten? He has it's... given his son to the people. No, no, sister. Begotten doesn't mean he's given his son. You know English, I know English. Your English is, mashallah, very good. Begotten doesn't mean he's given his son. If I say you have begotten I, a son. Not, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Don't I'm give metaphorical scholar. meaning. I'm English not a meaning. scholar. I, I'm you're not very, a scholar, but I'm your English layman, is very good. I'm a layman person. And but sister, your uh, English I, I is very If I say you have begotten. begotten a son, what does it mean? Yeah. That means you have had sexual relationship with your husband and you begot a son. Begetting well, is a brought function forth of the animals of sex. How can I attribute this function to Almighty God? Who did God have sex with? Who? That's the reason the scholars of Christianity, if you read the Revised Standard Edition, Revised Standard Version of the Bible, revised by 32 scholars, Christian scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 different corporate denominations, they say this word begotten in Gospel of John, chapter number 3, verse number 16, is an interpolation, is a fabrication, is a concoction, and they're thrown out of the Bible. So if you read the Bible, if you read the Revised Standard Version, it is the best seller in the world. Revised Standard Version, revised by not Muslims, not Hindus, 32 Christian scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 different corporate denominations. They say this word begotten is not present in the original manuscript of Gospel of John chapter 3 verse 16. What they say, it's an interpolation, it's a fabrication, it's a concoction, it's an adulteration. So, so Jesus is just like a son. Like Adam was son of God, Ephraim was son of God, Israel was son of God. He's a prophet of God. So I've got no problem in accepting that verily Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was a prophet and a messenger of God. 
but he was not God. Hope that answers the question, sister. So now, sister. Thank you very much, Dr. Sister, Dr. can we reverse the role now? Yes, I definitely. said I was ready to accept Christianity if you proved Jesus was God. Would you accept Islam now? Would what, you agree that my, Jesus is the prophet of God? I have still a few more things to clarify. You're most welcome, sister. Why, why do Muslims refrain from the statement, son of God? Why? Yes. If I answer the question, will you accept Islam? <laughs> Man, it's not a compulsion. I think we have a huge population of Muslims in the world. We, we yes. need believers. We do not need only Muslims by name. Yes, so we want Muslim by deed. So we want to become Muslim by deed, not by name, sister. Okay, coming to your question, that why do Muslims refrain from using son of God as a free? Very good question. And that is the reason, sister, if you read the Quran, Quran has got 99 attributes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Hakim, most gracious, most merciful, most wise. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his last and final revelation, if there's something like Old Testament and New Testament, Quran is the last testament. In his last testament, he has not used the word Ab. In Arabic, Ab means father. Why? He has used the more difficult word Rab. Rab is more difficult to pronounce than Ab, which means the Lord, the cherisher, the sustainer. He has used Rab as attribute, but not Ab. Why? Because in the previous revelations, previous revelation which were changed, Bible is the changed form of the Injil. People have misunderstood the meaning of Son of God. They started thinking to be begotten son. For example, if I tell, you know, young son, beta tumne achcha sawal pucha. You know, son, you have asked a very good question. If a son asked a question of the age of 10, son, you have asked a very good question. But if I say, you begotten son, you have asked a very good question, he may punch me. He will not say, oh, the Akira is elderly, he may punch me. That means I'm abusing his mother. <laughs> if I say, my begotten son, he will get angry. I'm insinuating that I had sex with his mother. <laughs> so son is innocent word, begotten son is not innocent. Same way. The sun is a very good word, but people started misunderstanding. So to remove this confusion, that's the reason the Quran does not use the word father as attribute to Almighty God. Otherwise, it's a good word. So same way, we refrain from using son of God because people start thinking that he's God. No Christian ever comes and tells me, Adam is son of God, Ephraim is son of God. Why? Bible says Israel is son of God. Why don't you come and tell me? Because they are programmed. No Christian has come and told me that the Bible says Ephraim is son of God. No, why? Because they're programmed to believe that Jesus Christ is Almighty God. He never said he's Almighty God. And I told you earlier, in my earlier answer, he never claimed divinity. That means you're insulting Almighty God. That means you're insulting Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. That's what I say. If Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, we Muslims are more Christian than the Christian themselves. You know why? Because if you read the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, he was circumcised on the eighth day. We Muslims are circumcised, Christians are circumcised. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said that you have to follow each and every law of the Bible, each and every commandment. Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, verse number 17 to 20. If you break one law or jittle from the commandment, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. If you go to the Old Testament, it clearly says in the book of Leviticus, Chapter number 11, verse number 7 to 8. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 14, verse number 8. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verse number 2 to 5, that you shall not have pork. Muslims don't have pork, but Christians have pork. So if Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, we Muslims are more Christian than the Christian themselves. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians, chapter number 5, verse number 18, that thou shall not have wine. It's mentioned in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 20, verse number 1. Wine is a mocker. You should not have wine. Muslims don't have alcohol, but the Christians have alcohol. Further, if you analyze, there are various references I can give you. So if Christian means one who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, I say that I am more Christian than the Christian themselves. If you become a Muslim, you are a more better practicing Christian than the so-called namesake Christians. Yes, sister. Uh, can I ask something? Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. You're most welcome, sister. I would not like to cross-question or uh, criticize your statement. Sister, I have you're most right welcome to, to cross-question me. You're most welcome to criticize me. I love it. Unless a person doesn't cross-examine. See, suppose I want to prove something. If I say this is the best, I want to check it out whether it's best or not. 
That's right. Because a logical person, so please, sister, cross-examine me, criticize me, attack me. Once you're convinced, then you accept it. Yes, sister, go ahead. I will definitely not intend to do something like this. The object of questioning more is to know more so that I know what I follow is right. That's all. Thank you very much. Sister, well, you can ask any question, no problem. You're most welcome. Whether your intention, you your intention is very good, but I went hmm. to the extent of saying even intention is bad, no problem. But your intention is very good, sister. You, so you can ask any questions, oh. and you don't have to accept Islam. No one can force you. Quran says, I craft it deed. There's no compulsion religion. Truth stands out clear from error. So don't think that if I answer your question, you have to accept. On the day of judgment, only give the evidence that I give you the answer. Yes, sister. Any questions? Thank you very much. Yes, sister. Oh. Uh, you said that uh, we Muslims are better Christians than the actual Christians. So The complete statement I made, if Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, we Muslims are more Christian than the Christian themselves. Yes, sister, your question. But uh, this, is, uh, this is not a layman's statement. Some I layman being statement. do not have a specialized knowledge of Islam and as well as Christianity. And you can ask the doctors of divinity whether I'm saying is right or wrong. Yes, sister. Thank you very much, Dr. Zanai. So what is the question then? That was my question, that why did you mention that we Muslims are better Christians than the actual Christians? When I said that, why did I say I that? I think this is beyond my thinking, that That's why right. would a Muslim call himself a Christian? No, correct. Why? Because we love Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We love him more than you. We love him, we respect him, we revere him. But we don't worship him. The reason I said this because I love Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. I respect him. I revere him, but I don't worship him. Because he never told me to worship him. If he would have told me to worship him, I would have worshipped him. So that's the reason I say, if Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, I'm more Christian than the Christian themselves. Because I love Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. I respect him. I revere him, but I don't worship him. So hope that answers the question, sister. Thank you very much. Look, what if I told you there was something you were missing? What if I told you that Jesus doesn't really fit into your description? What if I told you that follower of Christ doesn't automatically mean Christian and just because you believe in faith doesn't mean Jesus didn't believe in submission and conviction? Listen, you say Jesus was God and that God had descended. We say Jesus was man for Jesus was dependent. Our God is all great and cannot be comprehended. You say that God was murdered or do you believe that he pretended? See, God gave us brains and God gave us logic, but I guess God wanted us to use them in everything else except for this topic. It's like wearing a cross and proclaiming that you love Jesus when if God was murdered on the cross, the cross really shouldn't please us. I mean, would you be wearing an axe if it was used to chop your mother up into pieces? See, this is what happens when you believe in faith, but fail to believe in reason. See, we used to worship the creator until Satan turned us to the creation. We began to worship the people and neglect the one who made them. We began to believe that God had died, but how could a God even be created? A miraculous birth and therefore the Son of God was begotten. See the creation of Jesus was easy but you seem to have forgotten. The God says be and it is just like with Adam. A concept too complex for the church to merely fathom. But he was the creator of the universe for all we know even more. And so what if we can't see him? I mean what you acting like our universe is small? I mean, there's still so much we're still yet to explore. I mean, there's still so many things as human beings we still haven't seen, touched, heard, or saw. I mean, our eyes can't even handle the sight of the sun. So how can we possibly handle the sight of our Lord? See, Jesus used to pray, but in your opinion, who'd he pray to? I mean, if Jesus was God, surely prayer would be of no use. Or did he only require it when he needed to know the truth? Like when God wasn't sure whether it was the season of the fruit. Or maybe he prayed when there was something he couldn't do. Like when he said, I of myself can do nothing. But you took it as there's nothing he couldn't do. 
See, no one used to worship Jesus, so ask yourself, why do you? A concept so straightforward, but it's left so many confused. See, Jesus preached one God, but the church has failed to practice. And I mean, you don't have to be that dumb to know that one plus one plus one equaling one isn't necessarily gonna give you a pass in mathematics. See, the church said three, when Jesus said one. Jesus said God, when the church said son. Jesus never said worship me, rather he said pray. But you chosen to worship Jesus despite everything he used to say. You began to think with your emotion and forgot to think with your mind. I guess you didn't pay attention when Jesus says our father, yet never says mine. You claim to be a follower of Christ, yet you still choose to eat swine. And you call yourselves Christians, but in your churches you're busy drinking wine. And just to clarify, I do love Jesus. Matter of fact, I love him more than you. Because when Jesus said do something, I actually do. However, I'm not connected with the church nor with the Bible. See, I love Jesus as my prophet, but refuse to worship him as an idol. Just like he wanted and proclaimed it as sin. So it doesn't really matter if they don't let him in because Jesus wouldn't even want to be in the presence of people worshiping an idol of him. An act of God, bolt of lightning went straight through the outstretched hand of Jesus. This cannot be a coincidence. Before I move on, there's something I need to mention. The worshiping of Jesus, Jesus is a man-made invention. He never asks for your worship so he can grant you protection. Rather, he asks you to alternate your prayers towards another direction. To God and God only and pray that he accepts them. And know that just because you love Jesus, doesn't mean he feels the same way about your affection. See, what you believe in is exactly what he resented. Matter of fact, it's everything he despised. See, the worship and creation goes against the very message he supplied. So you began to follow a religion and called it love in disguise because love can be good, but love can be blind. <laughs>